Alright guys, this is what we're doing on this week, Hushing with Levere. We got some steak, we got some spice, we've got some onions, we got some garlic. What do you think we're gonna do? That was last week. Even though I've talked about it quite a few times, I still have people ask me, Casey, what do you do with the meat after you kill a deer, or an elk, or an antelope, or a buffalo, or a rhinoceros? Never killed a rhinoceros. 90% of the reason that I hunt is to supply food to my family. This is the meat that I took off the deer I shot in New Mexico this year. Link the video right here. If you haven't watched the video, go watch it. It will make more sense now with what we're doing. So typically I'm not a big fan of putting sauces or creams or things like that on top of a steak. In fact, I've been known to get a little offended when I cook a steak and someone tries to put A1 sauce on it. Oh yeah, that looks like a good piece of meat. Thanks, bro! Mm, it just needs a little bit of this drizzle, 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 yeah. But one of my favorite things to do with elk or deer or antelope is to fry them up and then actually make a cream dill mushroom sauce to go on top of it, and it is amazing. So I'm gonna show you guys real quick today how to do it. It's easy, most of the stuff you probably have in your kitchen. I mean, who doesn't have deer back straps in their kitchen? But the great thing about this is you can actually use it for deer, venison, elk, any kind of wild game, you can use it with beef. You can actually do it with chicken. It's really good on chicken as well. So let's get started. This is what we have. This is what you need. Obviously, some type of meat. This does not work on soy burgers, trust me. Then you're gonna need some dill. This is actually fresh baby dill. It was taken away from its mom earlier today. You're gonna need a couple cloves of garlic as well. Some shallots. I like to use shallots and not just a normal onion when I'm, when I'm cooking up. Mushrooms, I think shallots cook a little better. Mushrooms. Obviously, mm, take a bite out of them. Some Dijon mustard. Some people use heavy whipping cream. I like to use half and half, a little healthier. Obviously, I'm a big health freak. All right, let's get this stuff going, get cooking. I've got people coming over in an hour, so I'm gonna throw some baked potatoes in so they can get going, and then I'm gonna cut the stuff up. We'll throw it in a pan, we'll cook it up. It'll be great. Alright, so that's everything we have to cut up. Let's get it going in the pan, and then I'll show you what we do with the steaks. Alright, once they're in there, you just want to flip them around, get that butter covering everything. That butter and the garlic and the and the shallots need to be covering the mushrooms. And then we're just going to let it sit here and cook for probably six, seven minutes until the mushrooms soften up a little bit. But while that's cooking, let me show you what I'm going to do with the steaks. So typically, I'm a pretty die-hard barbecuer. I love cooking the steaks out on the grill outside. I've actually found there's a way that I can capture more of the flavor inside the steak if I do it this way. And that's how I'm going to do it this time. We'll see how it turns out. So what we're going to do basically is we're going to sear each side of the steak for about one minute. All right, that's about what you want. See that seared texture on there? Once they're seared, we're gonna throw them on a pan and throw them in the oven on 350 for probably five or six minutes, depending on how you like them. Four or five minutes is more of a medium rare, five, six minutes is more of a medium. The steaks are done, let's finish the sauce that's going on top. The mushrooms look beautiful, they look like they're ready to go. They are just dying for some cream and some dill. And now what we're gonna add is half and half, and that's kind of gonna reduce them. It's also gonna make a cream sauce. And then the last thing I do is actually put the dill in, and I just let the dill cook just for a little bit. I don't like to cook, overcook the dill. Never overcook the dill. You know what Grandma says. All right, just add about half of this container. See it simmer down? Simmer down now. Simmer down now. So once your cream's in, you wanna turn the heat down a little bit, because you actually don't wanna boil the cream, because it can curdle. So you turn the heat down and you just let it sit, and just simmer. Simmer down now. Simmer down now. After making three or four simmer down now jokes, you're ready to add your dill. All of the dill. I almost forgot one of the most important parts. It's something I actually just started doing. Throw a little Dijon in there. Maybe like two tablespoons at the very most. All right guys, I think those steaks are done. They've been in there for about five minutes. Yeah, it's about medium. Right there, medium. I think we're good. 
All right, so there you have it, guys. That's how you do it. Once the steak's done, you just smother your dill cream mushroom sauce over the top. It's ready to go. I, I served it up with a baked potato, because I'm from Idaho, and a salad. So you got basically all three courses you need. I, I, love, I love when you smother my dill, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just gonna need a good attitude. I hope you brought that good attitude along. Come on, come along, come on. Where are we going?